Algebra 2 last year, you did a lot of graphing. And now we're going to learn two new basic graphs. They are the graph of sine of x and cosine of x. Now, so far, we've been using the unit circle to look at sine and cosine. But what if instead of looking at sine and cosine from the unit circle, what if we imagine that the angle we're taking the sine of is the x-axis? and we imagine that the y-axis is going to represent the value of sine. Well, then we know from the unit circle that if the angle is zero, sine is zero. So our graph passes through the origin. And as my angle gets bigger and bigger, sine gets bigger and bigger, until I get to where the angle is pi over 2. Because at pi over 2, sine has the biggest value you can have. It's equal to 1. And then, as the angle gets bigger and bigger, looking at the unit circle, I would see that the sine would get smaller and smaller until I got to pi. At 1 pi, sine would be equal to 0 again. And then if I keep going into the next section, as the angle gets bigger and bigger, sine gets smaller and smaller, getting negative. And it gets more and more negative until sine reaches its lowest value of negative 1, at the location 3 pi over 2. And then as we complete the circle and move toward the angle of 2 pi, sine gets bigger and bigger until we're back to sine equaling 0 when we complete the circle. Now, the time it takes me to get from the origin up to the top, down to the bottom, and back to the middle again is called a period. <laughs> The time it takes to get from the origin to the top to the bottom and back to the middle again is called a period. And so we could say that this graph has a period of 2 pi. 0 to 2 pi is how long it takes me to get from the origin going upward, back down, and then back to where we started, 2 pi. And you'll notice if I went another 2 pi to 4 pi, I would have another period. So I would go up to 1, back to 0, back down to negative 1, and back to 1. And this pattern continues on in both directions. If I follow this graph to the left, then we see the same exact repeating pattern. And here on Desmos, if I pull up, click on this wrench right here, I can change my viewing window. Right now, I'm looking from x equaling negative 2 pi to x equaling positive 4 pi. Well, what if I went backward to negative 4 pi? Then what do I see? I see 1, 2, 3, 4 identical periods. Now most of the time what we're going to do when we draw these graphs is we're just going to look at one period. And so the easiest way to do that, well I know you guys don't like negatives, so what if we start from 0? If I start from 0, the origin right there, then now how many periods do I see? I see one complete period, two complete periods. And now, well, I only want to see one period, so where should I cut this off at? I decided to start from zero. Zero is a nice place to start from. Where should I stop? That's right. I'm going to stop at 2 pi. So again, if I go over here and I adjust my viewing window so that my x's go from zero to 2 pi, then I see just one period from the middle to the top, back to the middle to the bottom, and then back to the middle again, one complete cycle. And most of the time in class, we're only going to draw one complete cycle. But you need to always remember that we could keep going. We could go backward to negative 2 pi or negative 4 pi or even more, and we could go forward even more, like say to 6 pi, and see multiple periods. Now, if you look at the shape here, you'll notice this is kind of shaped like a wave. And since this is shaped like a wave, these are often called wave functions. What other function looks like this? Well, cosine does. So here in purple, I have sine. Now take a look, y equals cosine x here in orange. And you'll notice that cosine x 
has very much the same shape here in orange that sine does in blue. Let's get down to just one period and see how they compare to each other. So I'm going to shrink this guy down now so that it goes from 0 to 2 pi. Because as we discussed a minute ago, for sine, 0 to 2 pi shows us one complete period. Well, what about cosine? Well, 0 to 2 pi also shows us one complete period of cosine. When x is 0, cosine has its biggest value of 1. Then if you look at the unit circle, as, as your angle gets bigger and bigger, the value of cosine gets smaller and smaller. Right here at pi over 2, x has its smallest value, I mean, uh, well, smallest size, it's 0. Then as x gets bigger and bigger, the angle gets bigger and bigger, cosine starts to be negative until you get to pi. And from the unit circle, we know that the cosine of pi is negative 1. And then as your angle gets even bigger, now cosine starts to get bigger and bigger until we get to right here. This is 3 pi over 2, and cosine is 0 again. And then as we continue going through toward 2 pi, cosine gets bigger and bigger until it equals 1. And so sine and cosine have the same period of 2 pi. They also have the same height. And height in this vocabulary we call amplitude. Amplitude is half the distance from the top to the bottom. So if I look at this graph, my very top is at 1. My very bottom is at negative 1. So that distance is 2. Amplitude is half of that. So the amplitude, which is like that or like that, is equal to 1. So those are the basic graphs of sine and cosine.